A Melbourne teacher de has decided that her career is less important than standing up for the rights of children to be free from radical left-wing indoctrination. As the World Health Organization's agenda to sexualize the next generation younger and younger progresses, we as normal people will need more and more teachers like this fine lady. Let's explore! Hello everyone and welcome to the Freedom Alternative. Uh, by now I suspect most of you have already learned about the state of Victoria's decision to roll out mandatory classes in respectful relationships, which is nothing more than left-wing propaganda, no different in intent than the mandatory classes in the wonders of the multilaterally developed socialist society that we used to have back in communism here in Eastern Europe. So, coming from the Herald Sun, Melbourne High School teacher says she would refuse to teach lewd, safe schools and respectful relationships program. It's a very long article, but I'll read it in its entirety since it is subscribers only. So, it goes like this, quote, A Melbourne High School teacher says she would refuse to teach lewd material in the Victorian government's mandatory respectful relationships program to be introduced in all state schools next year. Moira Deeming, a teacher and mother of three, said that she, would, she was shocked by the content and would rather be fired from her job than teach such sleazy, unnecessary drivel to her students. Miss Deeming, uh, 33, said that educating children as young as 12 about porn and getting them to have classroom discussions about masturbation and sex was not appropriate and would not help to stop gender-based violence and discrimination as the program allegedly intends. Under the program, children as young as PrEP are also being introduced to same-sex relationships through children's books, including Tango Makes Three, a tale about two male penguins who adopt a baby penguin. The book has been banned in Singapore and uh, after parent outrage was scrapped from some school libraries in the United Kingdom and the United States. It also featured in the most complained books in America over five consecutive years for promoting a homosexual agenda. I feel that this program is bullying male students and stigmatizing and stereotyping them, the absolute opposite to what it is supposed to do, she told the Sunday Herald Sun. It really does build up stereotypes, it doesn't tear them down. If I was asked to teach it, I couldn't let it out of my mouth. I'd have to be fired. Debate has raged about the content, particularly how students are taught about male privilege and that masculinity is associated with higher uh, rates of violence against women, since the government made public the classroom resources for its Resilience, Rights and Respectful Relationships program earlier this month. The $21.8 million program, a recommendation from the Royal Commission into Family Violence, also offers explicit videos to students entering secondary school, giving sexual advance, uh, advice in an upbeat way, including that you don't have to uh, have an innie and an outie. You can have two innies and two outies to have sex. Also, in the teaching tools for PrEP students, teachers are recommended to get further information and activities from the learning research resource uh, All of Us from the controversial Safe Schools program, which is aimed at much older students in secondary school to teach and increase students' understandings and uh, awareness of gender diversity, sexual diversity and intersex topics. In this, one classroom activity suggests dividing the students in half and asking one side to imagine they are 16 in a same-sex relationship and the other half in a heterosexual relationship before asking a series of questions, including would they feel comfortable telling their parents about their relationship. Ms. Deeming, who is a member of the Liberal Party, has joined concerned parents and politicians to call on the Andrews government to review the age appropriateness of the program's content. In the Upper House this week, Democratic Labour Party MP Rachel Carling Jenkins uh, said the program focused on a misguided feminist and gender ideology, alienating and shaming boys by portraying masculinity as bad and women as always being victims. Metropolitan Region Upper House MP Inga Pulich uh, told Parliament it was a light version of safe schools that targeted younger children. 
Safe schools is only mandatory in high school, while respectful relationships will be rolled out to all year levels from prep to year 12. Victorian parents are concerned about the age appropriateness of the content being presented, Ms. Peulich said. Opposition education spokesman uh, Nick Wakeling uh, called the program radical and said the biggest concern is that parents had not been consulted or given consent. Parents want their kids to fundamentally learn how to read, write and count. Parents wouldn't have expected content on transgender as part of a fi family violence program, he said. But Education Minister James Merlino stood by the program in its entirety and called on those opposing it to stop playing politics as vi so violence against women could be stopped. To stop playing politics. You see, <clears throat> this is why one should never even attempt to convince leftists, but rather convince the neutral audience that the leftist is insane. To these people, the idea that someone might disagree with them only makes sense if that someone is an oppressor or that someone is on an opposite political point of view and is thus playing politics, because otherwise, without politics, no one would disagree with the radical left. That's how these people think. Never mind the fact that uh, opposition to this nonsense comes even from within the left, including Labour Party representatives in the upper house. None of that matters to the hardline leftist ideologue on a mission to impose radical ideology upon everyone, and especially upon children. Alright, but what exactly is the problem? I mean, what do these parents and teachers object to? Well, the newspaper makes a pretty neat summary, so let me read it to you. Quote, what kids will learn and when? Well, preps, uh, challenging male and female labels by saying that girls can be firefighters and boys receptionists, uh, reading materials to reflect diverse families, including Ant Tango Makes Three, about two gay penguins who adopt a baby penguin, years one and two, games to teach that some kids have two moms or dads, uh, and encourage children that whether male or female you can play football, be a doctor, or stay home to look after kids. Years 3 and 4, understanding the difference between sex and gender, looking at gender norms and stereotypes and examining the effects of gender-based violence. Years 5 to 6, gender identity and whether gender is born or made, learning the difference between same-sex attracted, heterosexual and transgender, uh, taught about uh, power and division between men and women, including unequal pay. Year 7 to 8, class videos giving sexual advice, including when is the right time for sex, uh, dangers of porn and sexting. Years 9 to 10, learning about gender, power, violence and respect. Uh, years 11 to 12, introduced to terms as gender fluid, pansexual, cisgender and transsexual. Now, you tell me, does one need to play politics to oppose the idea of discussions about porn for 11 or 12 year olds? Also, you will notice that the stratification is almost word for word uh, from the World Health Organization gu guidelines, which I talked about here. The fact of the matter is that one doesn't need to be part of the religious right to believe that porn is unacceptable on taxpayer-funded schools. One doesn't need to be a far-right Bible-thumping bigot to be opposed to the teaching of outright mythology in schools, such as the mythology of the pay gap or the mythology that there can be such thing as gender outside of the biologically determined sex. The point is that when it comes to these kinds of insanities, the fight is not right versus left, but right versus wrong. The establishmentarian nutcases seeking to shove down the throats of children such insanely idiotic notions are simply wrong. And opposing the inculcation of wrong ideas into the impressionable minds of children using taxpayers' money should not be a partisan position, but rather a position of any normal, sane, taxpaying parent and normal, sane teachers. Opposing these things is a lot more important, or dare I argue, is the most important thing normal people ought to be concerned about.
I mean, it's not misogyny in video games, and it's not American documentaries about men's rights, these being the two things about the so-called civil society in Australia has recently been concerned about. But it's not those. It's what your children get to be taught that matters the most. Yet for some reason, you don't see a, a peep about this in the media. I mean, this article is behind a paywall on a relatively low circulation paper. You don't see vigorous discussion about this on ABC, and we all know why. All right. Oh, one more thing. Besides the ballot box, parents should continue to vote with their wallets, too. I mean, surely normal people from Victoria should vote out the mental asylum patients that are currently governing the state. That goes without saying. But furthermore, they should vote with their wallets and join the 35% of Australian parents who already take their children to private schools and avoid altogether the utter insanity of state schools. Tax avoidance and voting with your wallet are the best options for individual resistance to this nonsense. And with that being said, thank you for watching, thank you for your continuous support of this channel, and um, I'll see you around on Freedom Alternative.